So, good morning everyone. Um, today we will perform an exercise about heuristic evaluation, but before starting the exercise, uh, yesterday after the lesson we published, uh, as you may know, the assignment number five. So to avoid any confusion, let's explore it uh, one more time. Um, to summarize, we tried to simplify a little bit the instructions so that it will be easier for you to conduct this assignment. Um, your group has been assigned to a given prototype by us, okay? So um, all the members of a group will evaluate the same prototype, okay? So in this way, the discussion phase will be easier for you. You can set up a meeting either in person or virtually with your group and conduct uh, the second part of the assignment that is this phase in which you try to reach an agreement on the violations that, that you find in, in, the, in the prototype, okay? So there are these three uh, spreadsheets here, one for each lab slot, um, in which you can find the prototype uh, that you will need to uh, evaluate, okay? Let me see if I can zoom. Okay. So here is probably the same group. So for the four participants of a given group, I don't know uh, which is the group, by, but anyway. There is the, this link to the readme of the, pro, the, the group that you will need to evaluate, okay? So this is the link to the readme of the WeMind group that will be evaluated by another group. And these are the components of the group that will perform the evaluation on the WeMind project, okay? So we will make available this readme uh, shortly before the date of the assignment that is December 16, okay? So right now these links are still private, but we will make them available to you shortly before uh, the 16th of December, okay? First thing. Then, as you may imagine, uh, you will have a public link to the other group project, and inside the readme there will be also the link to the prototype to be tested, okay? So in theory, you can perform the evaluation on your own, alone, maybe at home, by exploiting this, this link, okay? However, you are strongly encouraged to conduct this evaluation in the lab on 16th of, Dece of December, okay? For three main reasons. First of all, um, you can ask for our feedback during the evaluation, so if there is something unclear, something that is not working, we are here in the, in the lab and we can help you. Second, you can also talk uh, with uh, the components of the, of the group, of the project that you are evaluating in case of any problems uh, with the prototype, uh, if the prototype is not working, if the link is not working, you can talk uh, with the other group. And third, uh, if you have time, you can also start the discussion phase directly in the lab, okay? Otherwise, you will have to schedule a meeting with, with your group, okay? So, again, if you really cannot attend your lab slot on December 16, you can perform the evaluation on your own without involving any other people, uh, but you are strongly encouraged to to attend your lab slot and perform the evaluation here in the lab. Um, so, for most of you, this uh, first part, uh, the individual part, uh, will take place on December 16, and then by December 20, uh, you should discuss with your group, you should reach an agreement, and you should uh, produce this kind of joint report and you will include a link to this joint report in this online spreadsheet, okay? And this is the, the task for this assignment, okay? Sharing the link with the other group by December 20, okay? This is the only 
task, the only deliverable for this assignment. Uh, obviously, the outcomes, the individual report, uh, um, will be included in your final report. So you will be asked to insert your individual evaluation in the final report, and you will be evaluated individually depending on the outcomes of your individual evaluation. Okay, so the joint report is just to help the other group to maybe fix something in the design, but you will be evaluated uh, individually uh, depending on the outcomes of your individual um, evaluation reported in the final report. Okay? Any questions? Okay, perfect. Again, Read carefully the assignment. There are the provided templates that you should use. There are all the instructions for uh, successfully completing the, the assignment. So today we will have an exercise um, on heuristic evaluation. Okay. So the goal is to conduct an individual heuristic evaluation and also share results with the class and, and try to uh, simulate this kind of um, agreement phase, okay? Um, I also reported some slides with a recap of the heuristic evaluation, but I think we can, we can skip these slides. You can use them if you, if you need more details. Uh, let's go to the exercise. We will perform an heuristic evaluation, uh, as I said yesterday, on the Trenitalia website. Uh, Trenitalia is the primary train operator in Italy, okay? And it offers uh, rail transport with both regional trains and high-speed trains. And high-speed trains are called frecciaros, right? Um, so I listed here three tasks that you should use to guide, to conduct uh, your individual uh, heuristic evaluation. Um, so they are similar to the three tasks that you will use in assignment five. Uh, so the three tasks that you already defined. So the first task is to explore the offers proposed by the website and try to buy uh, a discounted ticket, okay? So there will be uh, a specific portion of the website dedicated to offers. You should explore this portion and try to buy a discounted ticket. Second task, you should try to buy a Freccia Rossa round trip from Turin to Rome uh, for the winter holidays, okay? So don't buy the ticket for real, but let's add the tickets in the shopping basket and, and then close the website. Uh, and finally, you should try to chat, again, not for real, or you can also try if you want, chat with an operator for receiving support in the website. Okay? There is this possibility of chatting with, with an operator uh, for, for receiving, for receiving uh, help, support. Okay? Three tasks. Um, in performing these three tasks, if you want and if it's necessary, uh, you can also register or log in into the platform if you are already registered to, to the Trenitalia website. And you can also change the language of, of the website, okay? So the website will be probably in Italian, but there is an easy way to change the language of, of the interface. So phase one, you have about 30 minutes, 45 minutes to conduct this kind of uh, individual heuristic evaluation. Try to conduct it individually. Obviously, you can speak with your colleagues if you want. Um, on December 16, instead, you should really try to perform uh, this evaluation individually. Um, you can keep the list of heuristics in front of you. Maybe you can open the slides uh, while you are performing the task, and you should use these heuristics to guide uh, your exploration of, of the system, of the website, and, and find uh, uh, usability problems and takes notes, obviously. Um, if you find usability prob problems, and probably you will, you should always 
uh, specify which heuristics each problem you found is related to. And in particular, you can use this template that is linked here, that is very similar to the template that you will use in the assignment five uh, as a guide to report your, your problems. Um, so in the template, there is some, some examples about how to report the usability problems. So each violation should be numbered sequentially and formatted as follows. So, okay, there is, ah, sorry, you cannot see the, the screen. Let me. Okay, here is the template. There is a number of the problem, so the bullet point, the bullet number. Then there is the heuristic number and name, so the heuristic that the problem uh, violates. Then there, is, there are three, uh, three fields, let's say. Where, so specify where the issue uh, is, is included. Um, what, so a description of the problem and, and why. Why this problem violates the heuristic here. So for example, this is an example of a violation of an hypothetical uh, interface. This is a violation about heuristic number four, where in the portion of the interface to specify your language, what the app uses save for saving information, except here where it uses store. So it's an example of using uh, two different labels for the same button, for example. And why? Why it's a violation? Because it's an inconsistent terminology and blah, blah, blah. Okay? And finally, very important, there is the severity rating. Okay? Please use the uh, scale that we have seen yesterday from zero to four, the scale proposed by Nielsen. So zero cosmetic problems for usability catastrophe. Okay? And also, maybe not today, but uh, on the assignment five, you should also uh, add here a number representing the number of violations for each, uh, for each heuristic, okay? And then also write one, two paragraphs covering general impression of, of the problems. This is more related to what we will perform on December 16. So today, let's try to list some violations uh, with this format. And then, in the second part of this lesson, uh, we will try to reach an agreement all together. So I will also perform this exercise now, and then at the end we can, we can discuss about the, the violations that uh, we will find, okay? Any questions? Okay, you can start. Okay, obviously we don't have time to perform a complete evaluation, but let's see if we can have some discussion about the problems that we have found so far. Um, so, were you, able, were you able to perform the three tasks? No? <laughs> this is a very big problem. <laughs> Why? Okay, so you focused on the first task only. Uh, and on average, how many problems did you find? It doesn't work. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. So you stop it here, okay. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is a problem. We will see it in a moment. I also found it, this problem. Okay, let's start with, with some practical examples. Um, so here is the, the template. You will have to use another template for the joint report, but actually it's very similar to this one, so we can 
we can use this one. And let's start with the first heuristic, that is uh, visibility of system status. Did you find some, some violations of this heuristic? Any, any example from your evaluation? No? I have found, I think, some problems about this heuristic. One problem. Let's copy it. Mm. Okay, then you should have also the number, but anyway. So I found this problem. Let's see if it's a problem also for you. Uh, the position in the navbar logo. Um, so the description of the problem. If I click on the logo in the navbar when I'm authenticated in the system, I'm redirected to another website, so the URL changes and I'm automatically logged out from the system without any feedback. Okay, so uh, heuristic number one is about feedback. Here the platform is um, sending me away from the system without providing me any, any feedback nor explanation. So the user is, um, the user might think she is still logged in, for example. Okay, so let's try it. So here I can log in in the this is the Trenitalia um, uh, homepage. I can log in, in in the system. I already have an account. So here, as you can see, the, the website changed. This is another URL. It's no longer Trenitalia.com. And if I click on the icon, the logo in the navbar, I can go back to the previous uh, website, that is another website, and I'm no longer logged in without any feedback, right? So this is probably, uh, I give a severity three because it's, I think, a high priority problem. It, it should be fixed, right? So do you agree with me that this is a problem? Is it related to heuristic number one? Yes, probably. And do we all agree on the severity rating? I think it's not a usability catastrophe. You can still use the system uh, by, for example, reperforming the login and by understanding the problem, you know that you should not click on the logo. Uh, but still, I think it's uh, a severe problem in this case, right? Okay, so in this case, there is only one instance of this problem. Uh, this problem has been found just by me. So there is this sort of discussion with your colleague, in this case, we all together. Uh, and you can discuss uh, and you can also maybe vote about the severity rating. In other cases, maybe uh, two evaluators uh, have found the same problem. So in this case, you have Again, two strategies, you can still discuss and reach an agreement, or you can perform the average of the severity ratings, okay? Two strategies that you can adopt when a problem is in common uh, with more than one uh, evaluator. Okay, I just found one problem related to H1. Let's write H1 here. Okay. Heuristic number two, match between system and the real world. Did you find some problems related to this heuristic? You found some problems, right? Okay. Okay, yes. So if I log in into the system, no, if I change, sorry, the language, 
This, there, first of all, there is this strange thing that is the menu is showing different options depending on the language, but this will be related to another heuristic probably. Yeah, there are some, some words in Italian, even if I changed the language to, to English. And this is probably a mismatch with the knowledge of the user, so the language that the user knows, right? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, this is another problem. Yeah, but this problem is probably related to another heuristic. I found it, and it's included in another heuristic. OK, so let's try to insert this, this problem. Uh, A2, heuristic number two, where, uh, for example, offers drop down, drop down, what? Um, the menu is showing some options in Italian, even if the language is English. And why? Obviously, the problem here is sorry that uh, we are not matching the language of the user, of course. Severity, let's agree on a severity rating. Any opinion on the severity of this problem? A two? Do you all agree with um, that this is a minor uh, usability problem? It depends, obviously there is no right answer here. It's kind of subjective. Uh, Obviously, if then I click on a word that I don't recognize, but then there are some explanation, probably the user I is able to use the system with some difficulties, but yeah. I think it's 2.5 in this case, but yeah, let, let's keep two. Other problems related to the second heuristic, yeah? So when we select Chinese, the entire <laughs> layout of, of the website changes. I don't, I, I don't know if this is a layout that is familiar for Chinese people. I don't think so, but I don't know. So yeah, probably. Uh, is it a problem related to the second heuristic? Yeah, probably. Uh, maybe also consistency and standards, because this is not a layout that you typically find in, in a website. So, yeah, let's write this as a violation of the heuristic number four, I think, in this case, where I think the whole website. in Chinese. So what if I select Chinese as a lang sorry I as a language uh, the whole uh, structure of the website uh, I don't know, changes, uh, I think, badly or something like that. And why uh, the layout uh, is not consistent with traditional uh, website layouts, right? Severity? Yeah, it's probably four, for, at least for a Chinese user, right? Yeah, as I said yesterday, uh, 
Some heuristics are complementary uh, in some ways, so some problems can also be associated to, to different uh, heuristics. Uh, but probably there is an heuristic that, uh, that is more suitable for, for all the problems. But yeah, some, some problems can also be associated in some ways to multiple heuristics, obviously. Okay, so let's go back to heuristic number uh, three. Heuristic number three is user control and freedom, and I found a lot of problems here. Uh, but Okay, so your colleague is saying that uh, in the breadcrumb um, menu, right? So it is a design pattern that we have seen during the course. When you click on a navigation link, uh, you are redirected to another page, completely different page. So let's try. Okay, I can put it in Italian. And I go on offers. I select an offers here. Okay. Okay, so this is the breadcrumb uh, menu of this page. So, and this is actually, yes, reflecting my, my interaction, right? I click on a specific offer that is inside a category. And so, in theory, I should be able to go back to this page of Ferte Servizi, offers and services, that it's, I think, the category of, of my choice. OK, so there are two different, so if I click here, yes. It, uh, Okay, it's another, it's another page probably. And it's a page that I never seen in my interaction. It's the first time that I see it, so uh, I think they are using the breadcan menu in a wrong way. So the breadcan menu should reflect my interaction with, with the platform in a given session, okay? What? The menu is redirecting me to pages that I've never seen before, right? And why? Okay. Uh, you can imagine the why. We can also skip this. Let's agree on a severity rating. Maybe two. Do you agree with me? So it's not mandatory to click on this link. And actually, I know that my session includes just one click, one click here. So maybe I can also ignore this breadcrumb in this case. But still, it's, it's a problem. It should be fixed, because if the user click here, there is probably uh, a problem, a violation of, of this heuristic. So probably, probably two. Any other examples here? OK, so the same problem is uh, also present in the search. Uh, form, when you click on go back to search, right, you are redirected to a completely different page. So another instance of the same problem, okay? So maybe in the discussion phase, you could tr also try to merge these two problems into a single one, for example. Maybe by generalizing here the where and, and the description. I found a lot of different problems related to this heuristic, at least three. 
So if you remember, user control and, and freedom is also about uh, providing users with an easy exit if they uh, perform some, some wrong choices, right? So in the search procedure, if I select by mistake an option, like the return trip, there is no an easy way to modify my trip, okay? And typically you have to restart uh, the search procedure. So let's try it. Here, if I, let's go back to the home page, if I try to buy a ticket from, yeah, this is another problem. If I write the, the station in English, even if the interface is in Italian right now, I would expect that the system is able to recognize my input, right? Probably. Ah, okay, so <laughs> uh, this problem is even, so if I click on English here and I try to insert a station in English, Turin, it doesn't work. So uh, it's, it's a very big problem, I think. So let's search for a trip from Torino to Rome. Roma. Let's increase the font. For example, for the winter holidays, let's add a retro trip. Okay, I can select the first trip, this one, for example. And then I must click on go to return journey. Yeah, I accept. Okay, so maybe I selected by mistake my, my trip. Uh, and now I would like to change my, my selection. And there is no, I think, an easy way of changing my selection, right? Yeah, there is the edit, but it's the edit related to the search. So you can change the station, for example. But if you select the wrong time for your trip, then I don't think there is an easy way to change my selection. I don't see it in, in, in the website. Maybe you see it, but OK. So there is no an easy way to modify your, your search, your selection. And this is something about control and freedom, right? So it's on my. Uh, severity? No, no. I, I put two, but I'm no longer sure. Yes, probably it's two because, yes, you can restart from scratch your, the operation, and you can actually buy a ticket in some ways. Uh, but again, I think it's a problem, and this, um, this, um, and should be fixed. And and actually, all the problems that I listed can can be fixed easily. I think by the designers, it's it's not something that requires the designer to uh, restructure the entire application. Another example. Then I will also publish if you want this. Uh, incomplete set of uh, problems. Uh, the search procedure, um, again. So if I start searching in guest mode, so without logging in in the system, and then I want to log in into the system for some reasons, for example, to extract my data and complete the operation more easily, I'm redirected to another page, OK? so. The app is not offering a minimalistic logging experience. And this is the reason why this problem could be also related to another heuristic that is probably, um, yeah, aesthetic and minimalist design. Uh, but anyway, I think it's more related to control and freedom. So I would like to continue my search, right? So 
I start the search in an anonymous way, then I want to log in, but I don't want to, uh, to be redirected to another page, right? So again, here I'm buying my tickets. Now I'm, log uh, I'm logged in. So let's try with, yeah. I have to click on the logo and then I'm automatically logged out. So let's start with a search without being logged in in the system. Okay, so I select, for example, the first trip and so on. And then I want to log in. So I click here. I can log in here, but I'm redirected to another page. So I would like to continue my, my search and, and my operation, right? And this is another problem probably related to control and freedom. I'm not able to control my, my interaction session easily. Do you agree that this, is, this can be a problem? OK. Severity, again, it's subjective. It's probably between two and three. Let's skip two. Another, the last problem that I found on control and freedom. Uh, OK, when I select a ticket that refers to the next day, maybe because there are no trains available today, uh, there is a pop-up that says, OK, you are choosing a travel solution for the day after the specified one. And there is only one button, OK. So this may be a problem. Why there is only one button? OK, how can I undo the operation? So here, the only way to undo the operation is to click on OK, so to confirm on the choice, and then probably uh, cancel your, your operation, for example, by starting from scratch the operation, right? So there is this kind of problems. Uh, and it's also about probably consistency and standards. Uh, it is another heuristic in which uh, we have seen some examples about dialogues in, in uh, responses in dialog boxes. OK? Again, probably this is a minor usability issue, but it should be fixed. Consistency and standards. Do you have any examples about violations? on consistency and standards? I have three examples, actually. OK, in the search form, um, the app is showing two different search forms depending on whether the user is logged in uh, in the system or not. For example, again, let me log out. Click on the logo. Uh, so here is the traditional, let's say, search form that you can access even if you are not authenticating the system. But if I log in, I can also click on the purchase button, Acquista, and this form is different from the previous one. Okay? So two different forms for performing the same operation. It's, pro it's surely a, a violation on, of heuristic number four, right? And I think that this problem is mainly due to the fact that we are accessing two different websites uh, inside the same system. I don't know why they decided to have this sort of pattern, but it's probably the main cause of many different problems here. Uh -huh. Severity, again, you can then discuss to reach an agreement on the severity. In this case, I, I put two again. Uh, support help. Uh, the main website, so trainitalia.com, uses support as a label to indicate the tools that for receiving assistance. So if you go. Here, log out. There is this label, this button with the, this link with the label support, okay, for receiving support. For example, to chat with an operator. 
Instead, when I log in into the system, uh, the system uses help. So two different labels you can try with, with the website uh, for the same operation. So there is this mismatch, and the user uh, must think about it. So do these links refer to the same thing or not? So there is a mismatching, a consistency problem here. Again, severity two, at least in my case. And, and then a problem that uh, we have already discovered before, in the offers, the platform is showing different offers depending on the selected language, okay? So in this case, users browsing the website in English may miss actually some, some offers. And this, at least in my opinion, it's a high priority problem, right? So uh, we are accessing the, the browser from the website from the same location in Italy, so we should see the same offers um, independently of the language that we are using, right? Error prevention. So heuristic number five. OK, I can explain to you my, at least the problems that I found. Uh, so the first one is, again, in the search form in the home page. Um, I, can, I can type whatever I want in the from and to input fields, and I can click on search even if uh, I insert to non-existing train stations, right? So the app is not preventing errors in the search form in a way, um, because in this case there are mm, there are not any real-time feedback. I mean, I can type whatever I want here, and I can still click on search. Then there is some error prevention, because the form is not submitted to, to the server, probably. There is this pop-up message uh, with a very uh, terrible design. Uh, it's probably the default uh, pop-up message that you can deliver in JavaScript. Um, but again, there are no real-time feedback. I can click on the button, even type in something, something wrong. In my opinion, it's a cosmetic problem in this case because the form is not submitted to the server. There is some error prevention, but it could be improved if the designer have time. Another problem, again, uh, it's related to the same operation. There are no default values nor main options in the from and to input fields even when I click on them. So here when I try to buy something, there are no default values, uh, no placeholders. Uh, even if I click on the input field, I would expect maybe uh, a drop down with the main stations in Italy, right? Still, with this solution, the user may not know what, what she can type here. Should I type the name of the station, the name of the city, in Italian, in English? So again, as we have seen before, uh, I tried to insert uh, the name of a city in English, but it doesn't work. So we can uh, offer users some, some explanation, some default value, some drop-down menus and we will solve this problem very easily, I think. Severity rating, probably one, 1, 1.5, I don't know. Heuristic six, recognition rather than recall. I found this problem uh, in the offer. I think that you already mentioned this problem. So when, when I start exploring uh, the offers here, for example, I'd like to buy some tickets for this kind of group travel offers. Okay, there are some explanations, but there is no an easy way to, to buy this, this kind of, of tickets, right? And also, let's go back to the Italian website that provides us more <laughs> offers. Uh, I think that if I click on Offerte and then 
yeah this one this promo weekend okay i would expect to uh, buy some tickets here from this page by clicking on this button right however if i click on buy i'm red sorry i'm redirected to the traditional search form so I should remember the details of the offer, for example, the dates of the offer to buy a ticket for that date and then showing my ticket to the museum or to the, but it's the traditional search form. So I have to remember the offer to buy the ticket. So I should remember the offer, for example. And this is probably a violation related to heuristic number six. It is uh, recognition rather than recall. So here I have to recall the offer at least. Severity, maybe three, I don't know. Three, for using this specific feature is, uh, it, may be, it may be three. Uh, I didn't focus on heuristic number seven. Did you find some examples of Problems related to this heuristic? Yes? Yeah, in this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Actually, there is in my case. I don't know why you. But probably it's a problem related to the browser to the different browsers that we are using so it's a problem of course so your colleague is not seeing this this icon um, yeah uh, probably there is a problem related to this and related to heuristic number seven i listed it in the help and documentation, but it could also be related to heuristic number seven, I think. So for chatting with an um, operator, I have to insert all my data, including the email, the name, the Trenitalia code, to chat with an operator, even if I'm logged in into the platform. So obviously, if you are in an anon anonymous session, it's correct to ask users for some, some details before chatting. But if I'm logged in, I would expect that the platform automatically get my data from my account, for example. Instead, if I log in into the system, again, I'm redirected to another page. So this is the problem of, that we have seen before. But again, if I click on Assistenza, that is another label, so another problem, um, assistenza and uh, probably here another problem we are using some some codes some acronyms that the user may not recognize like this CF what is CF for the user I don't know let's go to contacts okay then there is this chat online there is this icon. I'm logged in into the system, probably. No, I'm no longer logged in. Why? So again, assistenza, contacts. OK, so I cannot, this is probably the problem. I cannot use the chat operation uh, from, from my account because the the website is logging me out every time I click on a button. So probably this is the problem. But again, I'm not able to use successfully uh, the chat uh, for receiving support. So this may be related either to heuristic number 10, that is about help and documentation, but also probably to flexibility and efficiency of use. OK, we are running out of time. Uh, yes, this is the last problem that I found in the search procedure. We have already seen this, this kind of behavior. Um, when I click on search with some wrong inputs, uh, the error messages that is simply a pop-up is not linked with the fields 
uh, that contains a problematic input, right? So users may not know what are the inputs that are problematic, okay? So it's a cosmetic problem only, but it would be better to link the error messages to the specific input fields, right? For example, by displaying them below the input fields, okay? Okay, I think that for today is enough. This was just an example, uh, and I hope uh, you will be able to conduct assignment five successfully. Thank you for your attention, and see you uh, in the next lectures.